a quest to kindle ancient flames. Ancient indeed, because those are only the five star from the permanent banner. And among those characters, um, the majority of them are from 1.1, 1.0. And we do have two Subaru characters, so I guess those are re relatively recent in Dea and Tinri. Um, and essentially, this just allows you to pick one of those characters and just obtain them. Subscribe, please! Hello YouTube! Hi guys! I know it's been a while, but I'm back with some very exciting news. We are but a few days away from the release of Natlan, two days to be specific. It's actually coming out on the 28th, and that is incredibly exciting. I hope you guys are actually ready for it. I hope you've done all that you wanted to finish with Simulanka, etc. This is an exciting time. We are getting a new Archon Quest, a new region, most importantly, and that's going to be absolutely amazing. On that note, we received a... well, received is a big word, but Genshin Impact's official X account, formerly Twitter, posted a big events preview for version 5.0. And we are going to be diving in those details right away. So, first and foremost, I opened up on the different uh, tabs because it was a bit uh, harsh or rough to see on Twitter directly. And we are going to go over everything. We have some stuff that we knew, uh, so it's kind of half a recap. But also some new information, some new rewards that we're going to be grabbing for ourselves. First of all, the art looks fantastic here. Of course, we can see the beautiful Mavuika. We can see El Capitano in the back. We have Mulani, Kachina, Yansan, Chaska, I believe. Uh, the Traveler, uh, I would say the, the, the running pose that the Traveler has is a bit weird, <laughs> but he's here. And of course, Kinnick having a good time, or Kinnish, uh, I think it's Kinnick. Anyway, uh, I love the art here. Uh, Mavuka is very pretty as well. Her eyes are so beautiful. So anyway, first and foremost, we officially have a free... Ten pool. This is the first time I believe that we actually have a daily login event that gives us free pool in Genshin Impact. This is a staple of uh, HSR and ZZZ. Every time there's a new patch, we get a seven daily login event that gets us ten pools. And it seems like we're getting this here for 5.0. I do wonder if this is going to keep happening for future versions as well. Are we going to get 10 pool every new patch from now on? I do hope so. Um, just put Genshin up to par with the other Hoyo game in terms of quote-unquote generosity. Um, I think it's important. I think players have been dejected for a long time. There's been a lot of backlash. And I think just, you know throw a bone to the community and i don't want it to be like oh yeah just do something just to appease the masses but it's also like it kind of feels bad when you're playing hsr and you get 10 pool every patch and just not in genshin so this is a nice move obviously the rest of the resources are i mean eighty thousand. that like this is nothing this uh, they're pretty irrelevant but the 10 pool is obviously pretty nice you just need to be uh adventure rank 5 or above so that's pretty easy if you're a player if you like, even if you just start playing, you can be eligible to it very, very fast. Uh, but yeah, the most important here is the 10 into 20 fate, so that's for the rate of banner, which is very good. Now, moving on, uh, we also have number two the gift for New Horizon a thank you gift. Yes, the 10 pool we saw before was not enough. We are getting 10 more free pool because we have a total of 1,600 Primo Gems, which is equivalent to 10 Intertwined Fates if you trade them. On top of it, we're also getting some Sanctifier Elixir, some Fragile Resins, and uh, gadgets. So for the two gadgets, it's uh, this little thingy here. This, it looks like a baby dragon in an egg. Kind of reminds me of like a Togepi or something, to be honest. Very adorable, and here it seems to be kind of a bear inside a box, which reminds me of Kirara's uh, cat box form. And uh, I believe those are gadget familiars, I think, that you can just activate and they'll follow you around as you move around the map. Um, here it says, by using the sanctifying elixir, you can obtain an artifact with custom attribute besides obtaining it from claiming the reward this time. There are other ways to acquire this item for free. 
So uh, this is the new thing they are adding, the new feature they're adding to Genshin that's even better than the other uh, similar features in HSR and ZZZ. Well, maybe not ZZZ, but HSR. And that is, you now can actually choose up to two substats and main stat that you want for an artifact piece, which is absolutely amazing. And for that, you're going to need a Sanctifying Elixir, which you'll be able to get from various events and maybe the Battle Pass. I don't remember exactly, but we're going to get more, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, each mail can be collected until the end of the event, and they will expire under 30 days, so make sure you claim your word in time, etc, etc. Next! Events! A quest to kindle ancient flames. Ancient indeed, because those are only the 5 star from the permanent banner. And among those characters, um, the majority of them are from 1.1, 1 1.0, 1 and we do have two Subaru characters, so I guess those are re relatively recent in Deya and Tinri. Um, and essentially, this just allows you to pick one of those characters and just obtain them. So if you don't have them, you've been wanting a Jin to go with your Farina, you've been wanting to do a plunge team with the highest plunge uh, ratio in the game with Diluc, you want Deya because she's super hot and she actually gets you some good damage mitigation that's gonna work very, very well with a character like Molani. Or maybe you want, you know, you want Mona because you want her to buff the damage of your Alekino. You want Chi Chi because you just want to meme because she's useless apart from that. Or you want Keqing because you want her to be a, um, a driver for your dental reactions. Or Tinari as a main DPS, if you want to use him as a bow user, he has his value. There's there's some decent usage for those characters, apart from Chi Chi, it is what it is. Um, Chi Chi is playable as a driver in a team with Farina, but let's be honest, it's just better option. So yeah, those characters are pretty good, and this is something that's gonna happen every single year, starting from now. Which means that every time we get a 5.0, a 6.0, a 7.0, we can get one more character from the permanent pool uh, of 5 stars and they will add more in the future. I don't know when they're going to be adding more because right now we only have, as you can see, uh, mostly characters from Mondstadt as well as um, the place with Mora. Leeway, we have two characters from Sumeru, but we don't have any characters for Inazuma in the permanent banner, and we don't have any characters from Fontaine either. So are those are they skipping one region every time? Are we gonna get two characters from Natlan added to this pool? I literally have no idea. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get those CC constellation eventually, it's a possibility. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll grab Deya, maybe I'll try to get Deya to C6 and make her main DPS in the future. Deya C6 is kind of equivalent to Hu Tao C1, so I mean, in six years, she's gonna be OP. Uh, so yeah, anyway, it's nice, we appreciate it, thank you very much Genshin Impact. Next, uh, for event Turbo Twirly! Progress through the Arc and Quest, Flat Resplendent on the Sun, Scored, Sojourn, Invite, Molten Gold, Yet and Smelted, Kachina Geo! So, by just playing through the main story, you will be able to permanently unlock Kachina. You get one copy of her and that is pretty cool. She's a new 4-star Geo pole arm user, Natland character. And she brings with her her little uh, turbo twirly, which is the little machine that she uses, her drill. And with it, you can actually traverse the terrain very fast. You can climb up cliffs. It's very, very useful. That mostly only works in Natland. They do work in other regions, but the stamina consumption is way higher, which means that it's not going to be as efficient for traversal and exploration. But it's still pretty nice, especially for Natlan, as we are going into the region. So that's very, very cool. You need to have completed Archon Quest Bedtime Story, which is the quest with Dane's Leaf that just happened in between uh, Fontaine and Sumeru. So essentially, if you're getting to... Not sorry, not Fontaine and Sumeru, Fontaine and Atlan. Which means if you're caught up, you're already eligible. And uh, it's good good stuff. So, you know, uh, a, a good new character. She seems to be pretty decent for a far star as well in terms of geo characters. So that's really cool. Now we move on to the wish. We move on to the banners. And here we have double confirmation. It was shown very quickly during the live stream. 
some people were saying, oh, well, they just showed it, maybe it was just a placeholder, but no, we have confirmation that those four stars are going to be on Moalani's banner. And here we have Kachina, the character I just mentioned, Xinyan, which is one of the worst units in the game, allegedly. Um, a lot of people have been complaining about her. She gives her pyro application is okay. She gives shield to the team. Uh, ultimate pushes enemies away, which some people was, didn't like at all because it's kind of productive when you're trying to kill enemies. You want them to be grouped rather than pushed away. That said, nowadays, if you look at a lot of the monsters, especially in the Spiral Abyss, they are immune to knockback. Uh, they can't be pushed around, especially when you're targeting like one big enemies and stuff like that. So it's not as detrimental. And she actually works pretty well with Moalani. She has decent power application. She gives her some mitigation. And that will allow her to actually do some big damage. If you don't have Xinyan, if you already have Dea, for example, who is a better version, essentially, um, you don't really need her. Um, and there's always, like, uh, let's be real, if you have, like, Shangling or characters like that that are just, like, better at those kind of roles, um, you'll probably be fine and don't really care for Xinyan. But uh, they always try to bring up characters that, like, you know, kind of can function. And eventually they have to be on the banner, so here they are. Uh, and, of course, Bennett is here. Uh, no real need to develop too much on him. Bennett is book in the bookend. He's a good dude, very unlucky, and he's actually from Natlan originally. Um, so it seems that he's uh, showing up, representing his Natlan roots on the first banner. Very, very cool. Uh, that said, that is going to be the first banner, Mulani. I personally intend to pull for her. And now for the for the alternate banner. We have a rerun of Kazua. Now, Kazua is incredibly powerful. He's the best grouper in the game. Um, he has amazing buff. That said, I think nowadays there are way more incredibly powerful team that does not require Kazua. So I think he doesn't feel as absolutely necessary as he used to be. And that doesn't mean he fell off. He's still incredibly good at what he does, but you don't have to feel like you need to get him. You'll be fine even if you don't pull for him, but if you want to pull for him, do do that because he's very, very, very good. Hey, hey, do do. Finally, we have the Weave Epitome Invocation, which is a weapon batter. And I will remind you guys if you forgot or if you didn't see the live stream, the Wish. Uh, banner for the weapon actually change when it comes to the epitome invocation. You now do not need to have two um, fated points, fate points, I think. You only need one. So before the weight function is that if you lost your 50-50 on the weapon, so like let's say you wanted the, the weapon for um, Mualani and you lost the 50-50 and you didn't get the weapon, you get one fate point. And then you could pull again, and if you lost the 50-50 again, you would get another fate point. And once you had two fate points, you were guaranteed to get the weapon you wanted. Which meant that you potentially had to pull a maximum of 240 times. Now you only need one fate point, which, if you lose the 50-50, you only need to pull only 160 times, which is way better. It's more in line with the character banner, and that's nice. Yay! Uh, still not absolutely fantastic, but yeah, there it is. So we have the weapon for the shark girl, which is very fun because we're getting a shark girl, and her weapon basically looks like a W engine from Zenless Zone Zero. So Zenless Zone Zero had a shark girl with a W engine, and Genshin was like, you know what? We can do that too. <laughs> went in with a shark girl and a W engine. Good shit. Now, moving on. Uh, I think her weapon is actually pretty good. Is it absolutely necessary? I don't think so. Then we have Kazua's weapon. Um, I do believe it is his best in slot, but um, it, it's not absolutely necessary either. I think he's good with a lot of other options. Um, and there are some more versatile weapons out there. Uh, that said, the four star on that banner are absolutely amazing. Um, minus the Dragon's Bane, I, I would say. 
which is a polearm. But the stringless is incredibly strong for character using like um, skill damage, uh, and that it's just great weapon. It's like one of the best in slot for like Fischl, for example. Then we have Favinus Sword and Favinus Claymore, which are also pretty good. I will say that Favinus Claymore is not the most used weapon, but that's mostly because we don't have a lot of Claymore character that can make use of it, apart from, I would say, uh, is it Yao Yao? No, 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 it's the ninja girl. I don't remember her name. Uh, except her and Deya. Um, there's not a lot of people that can use it. And then uh, sacrificial, sacrificial book thingy is pretty good as well. It's uh, it's it's good for like characters like um, the dog girl alchemist. Uh, I don't remember the name for some reason. It escapes me. Anyway, so overall, it's a pretty good weapon banner. If like you really want those two weapon, I would say if you don't want those two weapon. Um, or if you're not okay with losing the 50-50, don't pull on this banner. If you don't have enough to guarantee that you get the weapon you want, don't pull on this banner because the fate points don't carry over to the next one. Uh, but yeah, overall, if you do intend to pull, you're going to pick up a lot of uh, copies of 4-star weapons that are very good here. So um, yeah, good for you. Uh, and that is pretty much it for this uh, kind of recap of what we're going to be getting on top of it, on the official uh, thing here, we do have some information there. We are going to be getting the Traces of Artistry, which is uh, uh, an event that can allow us to get a free Catalyst weapon. And on top of it, there's going to be an update to the Genius Invocation TCG. If you are into that, you can definitely get that. On another note, obviously, Phase 2 of 5.0, we are going to be able to pull for Kinnick. Um, I don't know if we currently have the information regarding his banner. Uh, I don't believe we do, but uh, yeah, he's gonna be the next character. We're gonna get new artifact, obviously. And uh, yeah, overall, a lot of great, great stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Do let me know what you're most excited about, and I'll see you in Atlanta.